Hey, 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 there we go, Krishna, this class. So today we talked about the idea of truth with a capital T. And there were a lot of elements that we talked about. And one was the idea of the name of God. How do you even say the name of God in the Jewish scriptures, the, na- the word Yahweh? And when you say God's name, it actually can only be breathed. It can't be said. Because the moment it's said, all of a sudden you try to tie these different, you try to put it in like a little box and it has to be that and then the other thing. But in the Jewish Jewish faith, we're talking about Yahweh, it's breathed, it's... So every time you breathe, you actually say the name of God. The very first breath you take, the name of God. The last breath you breathe before you exit this world is the name of God. And so this idea of this sacredness uh, of life that goes beyond the mind we have. And that's that idea of metanoia, of being able to go beyond the mind that you have, to be able to change with life circumstances as they change, and to be able to continue to live life in in abundance. You can't stay at the same spot. You have to continually change and alter and dance the sacred dance. of life and so then I told two stories talking about this idea of truth and my first story I'll talk really quick and heads up there is a swear in it and it's the word ass just saying so here I am I will and there's also an accent and I'm never trying to offend when I do that so here we go I walk into Starbucks and it's a moment where I say something and I think oh crap I just said that out loud this happens to me at least four or five times a day and I walk into Starbucks and I say hi can I get a London fog but can you make sure that you put some vanilla in it or else it slightly tastes like ass and then the lady taking the order and she's like and I'm like, okay. And she's like, mm-hmm. anyway, the guy that's making the drink in the back, he happens to be of Hindu, Hindu descent. And he says, here you go, London fog, no ass. It was hilarious. It was awesome. Okay, so there's story number one. Story number two I tell was the story about how I'm exhausted and I have so much going on and, and it's supper time and my daughter is three years old at the time and I've had a bad day so I'm frustrated and something has has stuck to the pan and so I tr- I'm trying to scrape that off and the water's on and my how the, the my pot's boiling over so I move the pot off of the hot stove but I forget to turn off the burner. And here I am and I'm trying to get the stuff off of this off of the off of the pan and then Sophia comes up behind me and I don't see and I don't see that she's behind me and all of a sudden Sophia reaches up and 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 she touches the hot burner and when she touches the hot burner she gets burned okay now one of these stories didn't physically happen which was the second story but the way that I talk about it is this it may not have physically happened no matter who you are, no matter what color your skin, no matter what you believe, if you touch a hot burner, you are going to get burned. So which one of those stories, one actually physically happened, one didn't, but which one of those stories actually has a very, very deep, deep human truth? And the one that has the deep human truth for, for human beings is the story that physically so now we're, we're doing this this metanoia this going beyond the mind we have because da pepper, the bible is filled with what i would say human truth adam and eve was there adam and eve oh, maybe i wasn't there uh jonah swallowed by the whale did jonah really get swallowed by a whale i don't know i wasn't there like but the thing is is that's that's not the point the point is all of this extreme deep 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 truth that offers life and life in abundance you see it's incredibly beautiful when we're able to approach scripture from that to look at this 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 book these scriptures these this truth these deep truths for all of humanity that that we learn from that we grow from it's a beautiful beautiful thing so adam and, so there's two creation stories there's two creation stories in in our Bible, and it's going to in in, in the Bible, in Scripture, and and it's going to tie together into identity. Okay, so your first creation story is um, is it says at the beginning, uh, God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was a formless void and darkness over and it's just it says that god created this and that and the other thing and it was good and god created this and that and the other thing and it was good and it was good and it was good and then the last thing god creates is is a human being so there's adam that's my impression of adam before he has the breath of life in him and then i said it's also my impression of a hot dog Okay, so God breathes in the breath of life and Adam goes, Yahweh, right? He, he's alive and, and there, there he is. And then after he created Adam, he says, yes, he looks at creation and says, it is very good, very good. 
That's the first creation story. You are not just good, you are very good at that core of your being. Uh, okay, creation story number two is with, is with um, Adam and Eve. Okay, and so here you've got God's creating everything, 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 and all of a sudden God says, let us create in our image, in our image and likeness, um, man. And so God creates Adam, and then he creates all of these other things, and he creates, um, uh, he creates, and that's an important thing, like in our image, and God's image is beauty and love, okay? That's how, how Adam is created. And, um, and then... He says man shouldn't be alone. And so he puts Adam to sleep and he takes the rib, Adam's rib out and creates Eve. And now that that isn't so that it's like, okay, you know, you came from my rib, therefore go make me a sandwich. Um, it's this idea. And, and the next story I see is like, what if I took a really long pin and I shoved it in my eyeball and everybody was like, ooh, you know, or what if you see somebody get poof, hit right in the crotch? Ah! Oh, right and we we tell these stories and we all have a reaction to it and I say why if it's not happening to you why do you react to it at all and the reason is is because we are that connected we are that deeply connected it's like we have come from each other's ribs if I'm suffering then if, if so so if you are suffering then so am I it's this deep deep connection of this mystery of in, in life and so that's what that is about our deep connection and then when Adam first sees Eve he says at last bone of my bone flesh of my flesh sounds kind of twilighty but if you're looking at what it actually means is like at last I'm complete because we need each other we need each other in order Order to survive and so there's that part and then comes the the serpent okay here's the serpent and and this is where I talk about this being directly related to our life and and they're told not to eat from the garden uh, from the tree of good and evil knowledge of good and evil and it says because if you eat from this uh, you will die and also Adam and Eve are naked and not ashamed that's huge they're not just naked bodily wise but like they know each other completely like as we grow something happens to me you know I get called a name and then all of a sudden I'm like okay I can't really be that part of me anymore because people call me names but that's so we build a wall and then we say um I, I something else happens and I'm not accepted and then I, I build another wall and then something happens and I get really sad and I build and so we build these walls all around us and but this is saying they were naked they were completely who they were and not ashamed Adam's showed his entire he was in his entire self to Eve and Eve says I love you and same with Adam to Eve and God to them I love you just as you are as a beautiful beautiful child of God so there's that okay now all of a sudden the serpent says to Eve uh you got to take a bite of this fruit and and she says well I can't because then uh God says not to eat from that fruit and then he says oh you know what that pff, you know that you know the difference between good and evil you know you'll be like God you should eat it it's fine and so she sees that the fruit is good for food that it's a delight to the eyes it'll make her wise and so she thinks well why not so she bites it Adam bites it right away they realize they are naked and they sow fig leaves for and they and they cover themselves up you know that now they judge now they're judging each other and they're hiding parts of themselves you know Adam's like I can't believe that's how she made that fig leaf and Eve's like look at that stupid haircut right they're they're all of a sudden judging and 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 she, feeling shame and putting shame on each other and then they hide from God they hide from God okay I and then I what I did is I told this story about Timmy and Tammy okay so here's Tammy and Tammy's like oh, I'm studying and and Timmy's like I'm gonna call Tammy and so he calls Tammy and Tammy's like hello Timmy oh my gosh it's Timmy I'm so excited I love Timmy oh. and so she ends up not studying and she and because she sees that this this moment for hers is it's, it looks good it's a delight to the eyes it's gonna make her wise and so she goes out and they're like oh, oh my god right and then the next day she goes to write her test and of course she can't pass it because she she like she didn't study and then a part and if that continues and continues and continues a part of her dies it's, it's you have to go beyond that mind you have a part of her dies okay and and so it's it's about like there's temptation in our life every single day and there's 
consequences to our actions every single day. But here's the thing. God goes, Adam, where are you? Adam, where are you? He knows where Adam is. He's calling for Adam's deepest self. Adam has put all of these things around him and the shame has encompassed him. And God is calling to what is beneath that shame to, and saying, no, 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 no. You are not, you, you are a beautiful child of God. You are made not just good. You are made very good. And so, um, that's, that's, the identity part. Um, when they said that they they were that they were naked and they were ashamed, God says, "Who told you you are naked?" Like those negative shame things. The shame never is a part of God, because God says, "Who told you?" Right? I love you as you are, um, flaws and 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 all. I love you. Who told you you were naked? And then we people are like, but then they get punished and they get this and that happens to them. Like this is the thing in life. There's consequences that are going to happen. It's not God punishing us. We're punished by our own mistakes and 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 sins, if you will, um, and and things that don't set us free that aren't truth with a capital T. Which, by the way, you can't own. Nobody can own truth. It's a state of being, and it gives life, um, not pleasure. Right? It gives life. Those are two different things. So anyway, the, the last thing that God does to Adam and Eve is God clothes them in compassion and love. God always clothes you and is always calling to that deepest part of you um, that is uh, the image and, and, and likeness of God. So there you go. There was our idea of truth, and we will continue uh, on those ideas um, of, of uh, identity and scripture. How does scripture help me to realize my identity uh, and as my true self of not just good, but very good, as my true self of who I am hidden in Christ with God, of my true self of love. That's it. Have a good one.